you know uh, those like movie scenes is kind of what i'm picturing where like the fish out of water guy depending on where the movie's from and what they're doing is kind of approaching her and like she's kind of like thinks of his arms almost like tentacles like she's like trying to like maneuver out but also is finding him really hot so she's kind of trying to maneuver out but also like oh my gosh i'm melting so i'm imagining those kind of uh scenes yeah. where he's just kind of cornering her here a little bit corner there not menacingly but like playfully and she's just kind of wiggling her way out of these scenarios welcome to the story it's story time with sky you can fall in the then laugh until you cry it's story time with sky it's story time with sky welcome to story time with sky I'm your host, New York Times bestselling author, Sky Warren. Every week, I tell a brand new story based on the heroes, heroines, and meet cutes that you want to hear about. I bring on some of my favorite romance authors as guests to help me craft a hilarious, steamy, and ultimately romantic story with a guaranteed happily ever after. So pour a glass of something fun. Welcome to the story. Hello, everyone. I'm Sky Warren. This is Storytime with Sky, and I'm here with Michelle Mars, who has an unhealthy obsession with coffee, caramel, and funny t shirts. She writes steamy paranormal sci fi rom com romance. Hi, Michelle. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. I got to mich- meet Michelle. How long was it? Was it just a month? A couple months ago. Yes at readers on the river mm-hmm. yeah which was a lot of fun <laughs> it is a really fun signing with jr ward so we got to think about all the paranormal creatures vampire things you write paranormal do you write any science fiction or no i have one series the love war series which is paranormal and a sci-fi it's aliens vampires shifters kind of the kitchen sink of rom-com and i also have a contemporary series that's called the frisky bean so nice nice humor and steam is my go-to steam perfect how do you feel about monsters you know monsters is not off the table i love monster romance (laughs) (laughs) okay i have three story prompts for us. It's a hero, a heroine, and a meet cute. And we get to do anything that we want with that. We can stretch it. We can do whatever we want. So I'm going to tell you piece by piece, and then you'll tell me what you think of it. So the hero is actually a gargoyle. I like gargoyles. Okay. <laughs> I remember um, that cartoon well. <laughs> do you remember that cartoon? I like. I don't actually remember any part of it, except except that it existed. I was probably in like a like a sugar cereal haze while I watched it. You know what I mean? Like, so I don't know. They had to be like tough, right? Like that was mm-hmm. some kind of strong. So anyway, I'm, yeah, I'm, you've got claws, you've got horns, you know, all the good stuff. Tails, <laughs> tails. <laughs> you've got all the good things. <laughs> yeah. And the heroine is a book restorer. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like that's cool just because she loves books, obviously. But which we don't well do. <laughs> which as we all do, exactly. But with just with like an emphasis on old books, which I thought was cool because like he's obviously old. Unless right. he, unless there are young gargoyles. I don't know how they procreate, you know. I just He could also be popping out of one of her books, right? He could be doing a lot with her books. He could be protecting a book, he could know mm-hmm. about the books need restoration yeah okay do you have any thoughts about just them two all already like without the meet cute like have you ever done a book like that or does it remind you of a book that you've done so I haven't written any old vampires yet my vampires are all relatively new so I haven't done that kind of age gap myself but I, I definitely love reading it Interesting. Well, we could have him be young. I mean, there's no rule. That's true. Recently turned. <laughs> put, in char- put in charge of an old text. <laughs> or like, like he just wakes up one day. Like he's actually just been a regular gargoyle for like a zillion years, just like watching, doing his duty. And then one day <laughs> he wakes up and he becomes like, Welcome to being alive. <laughs> Welcome to being alive. Here's this book. You might fall in love. Right. 
I mean, I think that for sure, being someone who likes to restore old things, she could definitely have a lot to to do or say about a gargoyle coming to life with something ancient that is now restored. Oh, yeah. She could restore him all cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the question is, too, like, what does he look like? Like, I feel mm. like, does he look like a regular person? So, like, a shifter versus, like, always gargoyle? Oh, yeah. I feel like he probably, I mean, he can't really be stoned the whole time. I feel like he'd have some kind of shifting ability. But, like, when they're banging, obviously that part would be stone. I mean. <laughs> it's hard one way or another. <laughs> or another. <laughs> Did you ever read this book called Frozen by Mel Jean Brooks? No, I haven't heard that one. It's, this, it's just like this standalone. So it wasn't like part of her big series. He's like this ice giant type thing. And in that one, it was a really interesting setup. I'm definitely going to spoil it, FYI. So um, it's fine. he's sort of cursed where if he falls in love, he like has to bang her. But that's the curse because he's like also very pro consent. So he's very mad at himself about it being in love. (laughs) Anyway, they eventually have sex and it's like cold, but hot. I thought that was very interesting. I was going to say, every time I think of like an ice giant or something, I'm thinking of those glass dildos that you can freeze and make cold. I don't know. That's hilarious. When I was, it was a few years ago, I won like, a glass dildo as like an award from a blog and it just I didn't know what to do with it like I wasn't at a place where I could sort of I think now if I if I were like to keep it I would like I would put it on my shelf you know but I wasn't there yet you know emotionally so I just kept it in a drawer in my desk so every once in a while you'd be looking for like post-its and you'd open it and there's just this surprise (laughs) (laughs) I think the sex could definitely be interesting it will be hard either way Okay, the meet cute is actually really simple in this case. It's just they meet in a bar. I was thinking about like pickup line situations, but it doesn't have to be a pickup line situation, obviously. I mean, the gargoyle, maybe he would know pickup lines. You don't, he could have been listening yeah. all this time. He could have great game. I was going to say, he could be a gargoyle inside the bar that she restored accidentally. Like he was just decoration, but has been watching the bar this whole time. The person who, uh, what? yeah, <laughs> brought him in there, <laughs> didn't realize. Yeah, that could be cool. Like, if that were the case, then it's almost like magically that could be why he comes to life because it could be the like he was supposed to guard this building and he had this duty to do it and he would have done it forever, eternity, but they took the building apart or whatever. And now he's in the spa, he's no longer obligated to sit there and then he so, sees him. so does she have magic do you think i wonder if it's like if she has it but doesn't know it and if maybe there's some stuff in the book like about the magic that she could learn we still don't know like where she's getting this book or what about you know but the book could have like spells or something could the book be like maybe at his and she's the only one who like because she when she touches or something like it turns from stone to like a book so she's sitting at the bar reading it like not realizing that it's been stone this whole time for everyone else like something like that oh like the book is part of his yeah stone being oh the other thing that just occurred to me is like what if she's tasked with restoring this book and as she restores it, she's trying to like sort through. She's like, what are these poems, you know? And it's like actually a spell that brings them to life. So she like murmurs it to herself. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's trying to make sense of it. But he, the only, th- yeah. But the only thing about that, she wouldn't bring it to the bar. She would have to, she wouldn't mm-hmm. bring an old special book into a bar. I feel like it's not quite even a classic scene for her. So what if she doesn't want to be there? What if she was like dragged there? So maybe she was bringing it home and her friend pulls her into the bar. So she's got it in her bag. And yeah. Like maybe she works in this like academics department and her friend is like, you have got to get out more. Like this is getting sad. You know, you like you, you can't even 
you're just covered in whatever book stuff and if you smell like dust, you have to go out. And she's like, I don't want to, but like, okay, you know, I only have this, this one friend and she really is insisting. So like, I'll go out, right. but she's really uncomfortable. And I would and all three of us <laughs> pull out a book. <laughs> she brought a book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like the idea of him like protecting her, you know, like maybe some guys being a creep. I mean, he does have protection as his thing. Protection is his main thing. I feel like ultimately she has to be in more danger though. I mean, she has, because, because protection is his thing. It's like putting someone with like a Navy seal or something like he's going to have to protect her. What if there's a bar brawl and she hides behind his statue? So there's like, contact mm. and the ads getting out of hand i think it'd be so cute if it was like from his pov that like you see her being like oh i don't want to go to the bar but okay and then she shows up and you then see his pov where he's just like watching these people do this strange stuff you know and he's like sort of judging them and being detached but then when he comes she comes over to him like he can't be detached anymore yeah, just all, everything fades and she's all he sees. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, but I, I still think someone's after the book. Okay. That way he can really spring into action. So is her friend distracted and someone shows up that he can just tell is bad news? Yeah. And, you know, friends are, even I feel like good friends can do that thing. Like if you're going to a bar and you're, you're telling your friend, like, just hook up with a guy, like, just, you know, like live a little, and then she's going to hook up with a guy and her friend's going to be stuck there. Like, right. Oh my God, you know, <laughs> and she's not going to think her friend is like in actual danger. Cause she's not like a bad friend because she's not thinking that the book is dangerous. She doesn't know anything about that. Right. I mean, it's, it seems like a pretty like dull job if you like for, you know, as far as like excitement, <laughs> like yes. when you're talking about restoration of books or reading books, it's yeah. So she's in danger. Gargoyle springs into action. Then what? How does he get her out of there? I wonder if he, do you think it's a direct confrontation or do you think that he finds a way of distracting the bad guy and Ooh, like- then sneaks her out? I like that because then it saves some tension for later. So he sneaks her out the back way and, but then, okay. So then she's, how is she going to feel about him? She's going to know. Yeah. I was wondering that. (laughs) Did she go with him willingly or is she like, what the hell dude? (laughs) I know. (laughs) How would you write it? Which one do you like? I love banter as a rom-com person. So for me, for sure, she's like, what the hell, dude? What is going on? (laughs) She's like, what the hell? And he's like, you were in danger, but like in formal language and not really, you know, and she's like, this is even weirder now that I've met you a little bit more, you know? I mean, does he get clothes on even? I mean, I assume, like, I feel like we would, he would need clothes at some point. He probably would. (laughs) <laughs> there's no loincloth or something at least you think <laughs> so i think okay yeah 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 he could have had a stone loincloth so therefore he's covered but i think i think it could be both actually she could know that he saved her so she has some gratitude even though she's sort of hiding it behind this like bravado but she's also like what the hell but i think that might explain why like, like, let's say when they hear sirens coming, she's like, okay, come with me. And she's going to at least protect him from the cops because this weirdo, he may be weird, but he did save her. So there is still a bar brawl. He has, the bad guy is seen by the gargoyle. They've escaped from the back. The cops are called for the stuff happening in the bar Mm -hmm. and they're going to go off. uh, That makes sense to then, yeah, have her, you know, you save me, I'll save you. Yeah, sure. So she brings him back. Maybe bringing him to her apartment would be too intimate. Maybe she brings him to her office. Where all the books are. (laughs) Where all the books are. So like, obviously he'll look at things and try to touch them with his big stone fingers. And she'll be like, don't touch that. He's like, it's a book. And she's like, it's a special book. That's what I deal in. Special, expensive, old books. 
And then he could be like, that's why they're after you. And she wouldn't believe that at first, right? Because she doesn't know why the bar thing happened. Yeah, she just maybe had creep vibes from the guy. Yeah. Not not how long he's after. Yeah. How is her temperature for him as far as like heat level at this point, you think? I like her being, especially like in a little bit of a rom com like situation. I like him being super hot and I like her knowing that, you know? Like a little bit Tarzan-ish, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like just like you have like the perfect body. I've never even seen one of these in real life. I thought they were not real, you know? Right. For sure. Is he then looking totally human? No wing, like there's nothing currently showing gargoyle? Or is she also confused? Like she'd be more freaked. I mean, she'd definitely be more freaked out if he's got wings. (laughs) (laughs) So currently he's shifted completely human looking. It makes sense. He's either a stone gargoyle or he's a human. It works to both worlds. Yeah. So he tells her she's in danger. She kind of doesn't believe him, but she also doesn't know what to do with him. Maybe he's telling her, yeah, I'm a gargoyle. And he, she's like, this guy is crazy, but also maybe harmless. And I don't want him to just be out wandering in the world with his loincloth. You know, I've got to do something. <laughs> maybe he comes off as a little bit fish out of water with all of that, like pointing at things. And, you know, sure, he's been watching the world, but doesn't know how anything actually works. He's just been seeing how people do these things. And right. Okay, so he... It's sort of just exploring the world at that point. And she's like, I'm actually reminded of, it actually reminds me a lot of this. I'm surprised I didn't think of it sooner, but The Mummy by Anne Rice. Oh, yes. For some reason, there's like a sarcophagi like in her house, I think. It's been a, it's been many years since I read it. I was just going to say, I love that book, but I can't remember much about it because it's been so long. <laughs> yeah. And he comes to life somehow. And... I think it's just totally a man at that point. And I, I recall that he comes on strong, like we're going to be together kind of strong. And she's freaked out, but I think she knows he, for sure he's the mummy, like she saw it happen or something like that. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of action in that. I think they actually go to Egypt at some point. <laughs> you know, uh, those like movie scenes, Scenes is kind of what I'm picturing where like the fish out of water guy depending on where the movie's from and what they're doing uh, is kind of approaching her and like she's kind of like thinks of his arms almost like tentacles like she's like trying to like maneuver out but also is finding him really hot so she's kind of trying to maneuver out but also like oh my gosh I'm melting so <laughs> I'm imagining those kind of uh, scenes where yeah. he's just kind of cornering her here a little bit cornering her there not menacingly but like play and she's just kind of wiggling her way out of these scenarios right but also doesn't really want to wiggle <laughs> too much right right <laughs> I like that but I think what would be great now is after they had this sort of like playful so this scene in her office is a little bit of revealing like who he is and what he thinks he's there to do which is protect her and I guess this book and she's it's her figuring out a little bit about him and and him learning a little bit about her but also having that sexual tension definitely but she's in her element in this in this place you know what i mean she's like the strong one in this moment and so then i think the next moment would be you know where they should be they should be in paris <laughs> because yeah. Why would, first of all, there's not any gargoyles like in the U.S. as far as I know. And let's do like a really, you know, like a like a very legit gargoyle. And so we could put her over like in London or so. I don't even know if there's gargoyles there, but like just, just put her in and like she was recruited by like a university as like the best. You know what I mean? And since all she cares about is the books, that's where she'll go. Right. So she's an American that's overseas. Yes. Working on this commission on yep. these different books yeah that works that puts them both a little bit fish out of water i mean i don't know how long she's been there but right you know and she's it still navigating why, yeah it could be why like her friend her friend could be french and just like come and experience life you know like you, you're just yeah you're not even experiencing this country right you're just in this room right just come get some fun learn about this place that you're living in 
And like sex specifically, especially if it's going to be a really steamy book, you know, like try sex with a French guy, you know, like just experience. She's going to be like, of course not, but I'll just go to this bar with you. But yeah, it would mean she is less aware of her surroundings. You know, it's harder for her to get to know everything. And then it would also mean that like the visual of like when they're running is like through cobblestones, you know? (laughs) Yeah, that would be very nice. So... Um, yeah. Old, old architecture. And... Old architecture, exactly. <gasps> oh, you know what? Okay, so what if this? What if they're having this moment where it's a little steamy, it's a, like, you know, she feels more confident because this is her space, and then her space is invaded, and she maybe overhears, like, her boss say something about, like, the book and how she was supposed to be taken at the, it was supposed to be taken from her at the bar and it wasn't or something and she realizes that he's right she is in danger and they escape but listen he takes her to his lair with like the other gargoyles so he knows where to find them is there like a way for gargoyles to know where other gargoyles are i think like a brotherhood you know mm-hmm. so there's other gargoyles well that leaves us with other stories to write but <laughs> So he's going to take her to his lair or brotherhood. They're bringing the book with them, clearly, yeah. protecting it. So th- did they know that there was people always following this book, trying to get it? Is this something that's like been happening like, like through the years? Is there a secret society that's trying to get it? Okay, so I like the secret society. I always like the secret society. So I'm down with that. Why do people want books, especially enough to like steal them from universities and hurt people? Like it's for power, right? Like what if the book has like secrets of the city of like how to wield power over the supernatural beings in it? And maybe that's how she unleashed a certain power to like release him from stone. Ooh, yes. I like that because it really wasn't that clear before. So yeah, that's what's in the book and she actually uses it. Maybe it's even something like, you know, like she read it while she was before she left and she was just muttering it and then touched him. And that combination, she just like fulfilled the the spell. And gave him a chance to protect her at that point. So now they're in the lair, relative safety, and they have the book there. So that's like a really positive, that's, that's almost too positive. It's like the book is about to end, you know? Well, is it just a break in the action so that they could have some action of their own? (laughs) And then after some fun times in the lair, maybe there's a breach. Okay. It's not as safe as he thought it is. Yeah. So maybe in the lair, the guys are like, we have to destroy this book. Like, this is not a good book. In the wrong hands, it could be disaster and maybe she argued with him because she's like a it's like my book right now and b it's my job to restore books so i really am not down with like the destruction she's like this feels a little like a book fan you know <laughs> <laughs> i can see that we're not destroy these books they're ancient <laughs> right exactly but maybe they do feel like you said they feel enough safety to sort of have sex what is this place is it like Obviously, I'm envisioning something a little dungeony. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, is it more like old library type, you know, like big house with like lots of library and like old fixtures? Or is it more like a dungeon with like in a cave like setting or? That's yeah. a good point. I like yours. Um, it didn't even occur to me because I just go for dungeons anytime. But I think I like the idea of them actually having a little bit of like wealth and power and they have this like nice secretive grounds that it would make sense if he was been a gargoyle for a long time like maybe trapped that way that this place has existed all that time which is why he knows how to go back there yes he was guessing it was still there (laughs) but right right but it will be because like it's just like an ancient thing right Okay, so they're in this, like, actually gorgeous place. And she's uh, banged with his human self or his gargoyle self? <laughs> Which is she banging? 
<laughs> first. I feel like it definitely starts with the human self because that's going to be, first of all, it's still going to be pretty new to her. True. Having sex with a guy she hasn't known very long, who's like super duper hot and everything. She's either like, she's either like a virgin or she's only had sex with like really academic types. Because the thing is, if you're only ever working in academia, that's all you would ever meet, you know? Yeah. Already that sex is going to be like brand new to her. What about him? Has he had sex before? That's a good question. Like there's a whole other area that of world building, right? Like are there female gargoyles? Are they... Yeah. Yeah, like how big is the society? So yeah, I mean, but if he has, it's been a while. So like, right? If he's been trapped like that for a while, it's been a while. That's an interesting thing about female girls because it makes sense for a lot of races to have them. But like on the flip side, you really only ever see men. Or if you see like a stone statue of a woman, it's like the Virgin Mary. (laughs) And they can just be made via stone and magic. So they don't need to have, they don't need to be born with a lady. I wonder if the book is what makes it so you can turn them like permanently to stone, like trapping them in that form. Oh. Um, So it's both the release and the trap. Oh, I like that. In that way, if that's the case, like it really wasn't a good thing. The state he was in all that time. He was trapped. And his friends couldn't get him out because they didn't have the book. Mm -hmm. It had gotten lost. So now with the book, they have this power, but they're also nervous. Oh, maybe there's a betrayer. So sad for them. Yeah, maybe he's made a deal that if he gives over the book, the person he's dealt with will trap the head of the gargoyles. And he'll be able to become the head of the gargoyles or something. Like they have a beef. Yeah, he's trying to take you know over. Those... I'm sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, he's trying to take over. Yeah, you know those deals never go well though. Like <laughs> they have their sex. It's super hot and super good. And then boom, realize the book is missing. And they yes. know that because they're heavily guarded, it had to be someone there who took it. And maybe they even at the at least at the very beginning suspect her just because like you're the outsider here you're the one who didn't want us to get rid of the book and he's going to defend her even against his own brotherhood which is going to hurt him i can see that i'm wondering if at some point they left her alone so they could discuss amongst themselves if she was allowed to stay and all of that and at that point so they are sure she took it at that point so she had opportunity yeah but he believes her immediately and he defends her. I mean, I think at some point they'll kind of, I don't know if they'll see that it couldn't have been her. I mean, she, she doesn't have the book literally on her and she's still in their place. And she doesn't have the superhuman powers to like run off and give it to someone and then come back. So like. What if she doesn't know she has power, but only someone who has power can actually wield those spells. So she is like, I don't have any magic. I don't know what you're talking about. And they're like, you freed him. Clearly you do. And maybe she was an orphan or something or adopted at some point and was therefore never like brought into her own history. Yeah. I like that a lot. So if she was part of that other society, what if her original like parentage was part of that society that's trying to find the book the bad guys oh what if like her mom was always on the run and her mom was like we just are running from bad people and she just assumed like bad regular people but now her mom's gone so she can't even check with that like it's she realizes that it was this all along that her mom had escaped that That'd be excellent. Yeah, because now they have even more reason to doubt her if they find out she's connected yeah. through family lines to the bad people trying to steal the book. Right. And they would sort of like reject her even on the basis of those family lines, you know, be like, you could be with literally anyone. Why would it be her? You know? Yeah, and which definitely puts him in a bad place. Yeah. He's going to pick her just because I like him being 
Right. Super loyal like that. Like he's, that's kind of his thing, you know, but it's going to be hard because he's super loyal to his brothers and he's super loyal to her. Definitely. He's clearly a very loyal person and very torn up about it. But he's going to pick her and he's going to take her. He's going to remove her from the space, I think. Or what if he's fooled by his brothers? What if they're like, okay, guys, we have to go find the book. She doesn't have it. Let's go. And we have to go after, maybe they finally figure out, like, it was this brother who did the betraying. Because, you know, maybe he's not here anymore. So he kind of gave it away. (laughs) But we have to go find him. We have to get it back. So they go off on this mission and he goes with them because he's like, she's safe at the, at the home base there with whoever we leave behind. But that person, like they've already discussed it and like, they're going to get rid of her. I was just wondering if timing wise of when this all happens, like what if they actually hadn't found out about who it was until they've left and the person they left in charge of her is the guy that betrayed Ooh. everyone. So he's oh. now got her. I like that even better because then he doesn't have to hate someone who's in his crew, except for the one guy who already betrayed them. But the other thing, reason that would be good is because they could have actually said, you know, just like kill the girl. Like we don't care about her. We're just trying to get the book. But then he realizes, well, she has the power to use the book. So actually she's valuable. Right. So maybe he does. Ooh, maybe there's like a double betray because he could betray the team, the her family line team that was originally looking for the book. He could betray them because now he has, like you say, someone who can wield it. And he's like, I don't need to honor that, you know, relationship anymore than I honor the relationship with my brothers because I want to do my agenda. And now I have someone to do that. That's in my control. Mm. So he's betraying everybody to achieve his own agenda. He would have to have like a place where he was already planning to go because he can't just not have a place. So maybe that's more of a dungeon just to be like classic. Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Um, He takes her to the dungeon and it's, he's like, you have to use the book. Use the book and say this. And she knows that something bad will happen. So she's like, no, but obviously this is a scene that's not going to end well because he has all this power. Yeah, I feel like she's, Again, kind of from a rom-com perspective, she's giving him a hard time. Like she's slapping him in the head with a book or she's, you know, just giving him the hardest time, just bantering and tearing him apart (laughs) verbally. And he's just wondering if this was all worth it at this point. (laughs) Yeah, he could be like big with the threats and she's like just not scared of him and he does not appreciate that. Very much. So then, separately from this, Gargoyle's going to realize they had the wrong idea about where the book was and that she's gone. He's going to lose his shit. Oh, yeah. Tear down the world. (laughs) Kind of. But he doesn't know where, he doesn't know where she went. I feel like we're reaching, we're reaching the end, actually. Because this is like getting to dark moment territory. That's dark moment territory, right? Like she's gone yeah. and I would find her worst. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, For like external motivation, if he f- shows up and she's obviously like been injured or mm-hmm. that dark moment. Uh, because it's like they wanted the book and they wanted and he wanted her and they've lost both now. Yeah. So like the world is at risk and she's at risk specifically. I feel like a way... Now, I actually usually like really traditional man swoops in and saves her type of vibes. But I feel like in this situation, I do wonder, especially because he's already saved her a couple times. And she's learning coming into her power. So I'm like, what if the way she gets out of this situation is to use the book for her own purposes? Yeah, she could totally turn him to stone, right? Like that's and yeah. trap him. If she's learned anything, it's that. Uh, exactly. So maybe she gets him to believe, fine, I'll do it. Because of all these threats and terrible things you're saying. So sure, fine, I'll do it. And he's just like, okay. And then she sort of secret surprises him and turns him into stone. I love that. I love her rescuing herself. 
I love, I do love it in this case. And I also think it could be made a little bit more of a surprise element. If she does that and you're like, yay. And then she walks out into the street and then gets kidnapped by like her family. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So he could still save her from that. You know, he's still going to have to come in swinging, saving her from that. But she saved herself in one scenario. Is there any chance that everyone's belief on what the secret society at this point versus thousands of years ago, what their agenda item would be? Like, I know when her mom was running away, like she was saying bad people, but I wonder if there's been any shift since her mom ran away and some of the members being upset that she had to leave or like, are they maybe looking for her? They thought they were looking for the book, but maybe they're actually just looking for her to bring her back into the family in any way. I don't know. I kind of love sometimes the resolution where there's that you think somebody's bad, but then you find out they're not as bad as you thought they were anymore. They've shifted. They've had a little bit of a story arc. <laughs> yeah, I do. That is really interesting. And that would make it, I thought, I feel like more rom com mm-hmm. because I think maybe, maybe the old people didn't like the supernatural beings at all, just thought they were weird and scary and dangerous. And so that's why it wanted to turn them all to stone and have all this kind of stuff because it was just like keeping them down. And maybe, maybe people, some people still feel like that. So it's not like a complete reversal, but like her, let's say grandfather is actually so glad to see her. And maybe she's able to convince him that like, they're not all evil and like, you don't have to do this. And I also won't stay if you do this. Which means she doesn't have to destroy the book. Restoration (laughs) achieved. (laughs) Yes. Though it's still a pretty dangerous book. I feel like. You think they still destroy it? It's it's tough. You know what I mean? Like. It's a dangerous book. But it's sort of the whole ethos, you know, of her is preserving books. So it makes sense that they'd have to preserve it. And and I think it can be a little bit of like, you know, like the nuclear power thing. Like, yeah, you have the power to destroy us, but we have the power to destroy you. We're choosing peace kind of thing. Yeah, I wonder if that they have like, uh, yeah, some sort of joint effort to preserve the book away from anyone using it. Yeah, maybe it was hidden like for everyone's safety. And then it somehow it got out. And that's why this whole thing came up again. But what if her mom hid it? Like, what if her mom stole it so they could stop turning the gargoyles to stone and then ran? Yeah. That'd be very cool if she finds, like, something written in a margin or something that tells her, like, through some some point through that story. Like, she finds, like, a note that she's like, wait, that's my mom's handwriting. Or so she's like, how did this get back to me after my mom had already hidden it? You know, that's so cool. Yes. I almost feel like she could see something at the very beginning of the book, like just something that is either either her mom's handwriting and she could be like, that can't be right. Or a phrase that her mom would say that's in there or something like that, that gives her this clue that like, this is actually connected to me personally, but be like, no, there's no way. Cause like her mom was not a book restorer. She was not, you know, she was just some other job because they were hiding. Right. But if she saw her mom with this old book, it would explain her fascination with restoring books. That's why she would have grown up to be like, like oh, really into it. She like saw it like really young. Like she was there when she yeah. like hit it in stone or whatever. Yeah. It explained her fascination. Yeah. So, okay. So she brings the, the two warring factions together and convinces them to find peace, which is like really even more powerful than like saving yourself really. Yeah. Um, especially for a book restorer that thought she just wanted to like sit in her office. Right. So I have, I have two remaining questions on this story. One, what is the epilogue going to be? Uh, well, since we haven't gotten there yet, personally, it's probably going to at least involve some amount of stone, light sex. stone, sex oh, with light. light. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, I agree. That has to be in the book somewhere. So why not the epilogue? <laughs> right. I want to do a little stone sex for sure. I just like was not sure about starting there because she's nervous, but like for sure. Yeah. I mean he can uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a very long session. Okay. Yeah. So I appreciate that as an epilogue. I like literally don't even care where they have it at this point because we know what it is. Stone sex. Yes. Um, and obviously, I, I'm wondering if there's some way that, you know, a gargoyle can convey their longevity to their partners. So that would be in the epilogue potentially as well is somehow 